Good morning. Hi, good morning. How, How are, are you? you? Good, good. A little bit good. sick, but... You're sick, everyone's sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of virus. Yeah. Um, so, how have you been? Other than that, you've been busy? Mm, you say during the weekends? Um, no, before, because I haven't seen you for maybe two weeks, I think. Yes, yeah, so because... Baby. Yeah, because my my wife she's a teacher or mm -hmm. she's a professor for a uni mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. her class is is starting at 7 a.m yeah. and is finishing around nine or before nine so for me it's really difficult now it's okay because my baby is sleeping yes, but last week they... it was impossible yeah yeah it's hard isn't it and then he he can wake up anytime Yes, exactly. So yeah. I know I'm okay, but I'm just waiting for him to cry. Um, I think I, I the class. I mean, it's only this week and next week left, so there's probably not a lot of value in you moving to a new class altogether. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can um, you can do. You can do something else after this, but um, yeah, they said essentially just just graduate. Like you'll get mm. a you'll get a certificate. Um, I'll I'll give you the certificate next week, but you'll get it anyway. Mm. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so and, yeah. Will we have any other uh, final test or something like that? No, we won't do another test. Um, but what we will do is leave the leave the module open, leave the course uh -huh. open for another month. Uh huh. Yeah. So you'll still have access for a month, and then oh, okay. um, That's pretty good. Yeah, and then I actually thought because there are no answers for you to go and check against, especially mm -hmm. I think we've we still had approximately. Mm, I think there was about eight more modules in the course that you can uh -huh. access. So uh -huh. um, I'll I'll just start going through and uploading the answers. I thought that might be a good no, okay, okay, a good yes, thing yes. for you guys to test against to for check. yourself. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think like, you all did pretty okay anyway with the test that we did. Um, okay. So you were, you're all on track and good to know <laughs> yeah yeah um so don't yeah don't worry about not being competent because you've all mm -hmm. like you've all improved from the beginning up until that test and then oh. after that we've just gone through the more grammar so yeah you'll be fine Perfect. Perfect. yeah no yeah. yeah i think i think that independently i will try to find some kind of course by myself because this one is paying by the by the company but I would yeah. try to, to find some course just for pronunciation, just more involved in, in this kind of areas or confidence with, yeah, when we have to speak in an open public or something like that. Uh, yeah, so I guess, are you talking more along the lines of when you have just conversations? Sometimes yes. you can go yes. to conversation class. <clears throat> Um, would you do that face to face? Would that be better for you, or is online the only option for you? Yeah, my problem is that I'm in a remote area, so the closest city is Perth, I and mean, it's yeah. six hour driving. Yeah, so you still yeah. you still have to do six hours to do one <laughs> an hour a week or something. Yeah. Um, because I know that you can do things like that at, at some libraries will offer those courses, but more so probably in bigger cities. Yeah, to be honest, what I'm thinking at the moment is to move to the city because oh, really? we are struggling with a lot of things here. Yeah. It, let me say it's beautiful. The place is beautiful. It's really quiet. People is yeah. kind, but yeah. um, it's limited. Yeah yeah so you just have one no supermarket one market one small market I know. Um, the post office that yeah. sell a couple of stuff or let's say it's a convenience store yeah 
yeah. what else we don't have any proper restaurant there are two pubs that you can buy food there so <laughs> it's not very exciting is it no and there is no hospital the hospital is one hour far from here yeah that's and so, that's a worry as your son gets older and yeah and and, and let me say i have improved my english because yeah every single day i have to interact with plenty of people here but mm. i need also the technical part so this is the daily basis but yeah. i need the other thing i need the correction and people when you are talking with people people won't say no uh, you are doing wrong you have to pronounce it this way yeah. you have to yeah. say. because yeah. people are just working they are just yeah. trying to get the yeah. information that they need and yeah. continue yeah 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 exactly they're not interested in helping you as much on a personal yeah. level yeah yeah um yeah th this course isn't necessarily this course is actually only designed for you guys now yeah yeah so but i understand what you mean about having those people to talk to it, um journey was the same he he was yeah. he was saying the same about having more conversations so the yes. times when um i've just had journey in the class mm -hmm. uh speaking of journey hello good morning, good morning. yeah morning, because to, to to hey journey to be honest that is what what the company required at the beginning. It was more focused on, yeah, we need to, um, to standardize some level, but the main focus was conversation. So it was what we required at the beginning. Okay. And what, is it something that the company, would they do it again with, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because yeah, there is plenty of foreigners, but uh, I think I think yes because yeah, there is plenty of foreigners and mostly the problem is pronunciation or conversation more than let's say grammar. At the moment, it's more communication skills. Mm. Yeah, I know that there are like uh, 30 or 14 more foreigners from Filipinas and from other places. Mm. So, yeah, I know that they would be interested in continuing something like that, but I will highly recommend that it should be more focused on pronunciation mm. or mm. communication skills. Yeah, because I know that I know that grammar is important, but based on my experience, it's more important pronounce in a proper way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So when you when you write things, for example, when you're writing emails, etc., do you find how what, how does your grammar come into it then? Like, do you, uh, does it, is it not writing? Is, yeah. Writing is not is not a problem. Let's say okay. in a way, okay. writing not a problem. Okay. Even when you have to write reports or something more bigger than 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 a usual email, yeah, it's it's easier. Yeah, but jump into a meeting and discuss technical stuff with a whole bunch of people let's say 30 people or 20 people that is a challenge so when you that say te technical yeah how could how could someone that doesn't work in the industry help you with that technical side of things yeah, that is that is an interesting part, but I think it's similar to any business conversation. Yeah, we know the technical words, 
okay but yeah the linking yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah, how, yeah. How, how to link the, those words or how to, to start the meeting how to conduct the meeting how to develop the meeting it's pretty much the same it's a business area um so you know the jargon what is the jargon jargon is what you said the technical word so if i went if i went to one of your meetings uh -huh. i i wouldn't know those technical words but i would no. know the i would know the conversational skills and you you will get the context and you will infer what is the main yeah. idea yeah but i even, just have even, to say what is this word mean type of thing like uh, that yeah. one word is what yes. lot, that's what jargon is it's the language that is used specifically by that um that industry or that um discipline how do you how do you spell that one or how do you write that jargon one? yeah okay uh -huh. are you writing it down uh-huh i'll put it in the chat Okay, I will. I will drop that one. You look at J R J A R G O N. Is it? Yeah, jargon. Yeah. Ja ah, yes. Yeah, I know that one in Spanish. Yeah. So language in specific. Spanish, in Sp yeah, in Spanish yeah. is the jerga. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's some some specific way to talk in a specific topic or area. Yes. Mm -hmm. The jargon. The language that is common <laughs> common to. Yeah, like, I think um, the word. Let me write that one in my notes. The word, the word, the word. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, theory is a good one. When okay. most lay people will say, um, you know, what's your theory? As in, do you think it'll rain tomorrow? But with like my area of study for example a theory is a highly contextualized idea that has maybe had 10 years of research mm. um and it actually could i mean we could say that the, the pyramids were built by the egyptians but it's only real like it's a theory it's a very real theory but we call it a theory in the fact that it's not completely a hundred percent. Um, I just, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. Like it's, yes, it's the, in, the, in, the, in, in common language theory means something completely yeah. different to what I, I would say when I'm talking at, at with uh, my colleagues at uni. Um, well, so in that in that point, let's let's just talk. Let's just talk today. Um, let's let's have Johnny what he think about. So what huh? I was going. Oh, sorry, okay. Yeah. What is it? So, so, right, sorry. <laughs> well, um. So I, because we have the two weeks left. Um, yeah. I was just going to say what what would you like to do? I've just opened the rest of the class. <laughs> modules um you know whatever you want to sort of concentrate on like focus on for two weeks i thought if beata was here i, I thought she would probably want to concentrate more on the grammar <laughs> um yeah. like she seems to kind of like getting through those modules but let's do one let's just concentrate on talking for the next two weeks um in regard to we can go into one of the TED Talks and talk about that afterwards, if you like. Would you like to do that? I think we did that yeah, at the be. beginning. Yeah, so these, these yeah, two weeks are, are specifically what you want to do, okay? Yes. What do you think, Johnny? Yeah, just follow that one. Okay. Because Journey yeah. and I, every time we've been in class alone, we just talk, don't we, Journey? Yeah. yeah. And then the last, just, last five just or ten minutes, I'm like going, um, so you just need to do this, 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 and this. Try and put it in this order. Um, can yeah. you see what this means? Yeah, we <laughs> talk. It's like a, 
more than two hours last time we talked. Really, literally, yeah. like we talked for the whole two hours, didn't and, we? Yeah, yeah, and I asked you, just correct me if I'm wrong, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, we just we've, keep talking. I think. So it just seems like we've kind of gone in completely the, the different direction than what you guys wanted. All right, yeah. I'll... Yeah, I'm sorry that that's worked yeah, out that be, way. Be, being honest, being honest, I think that is more useful. Uh, the conversation for Johnny yeah. and, and I, it would be more. Yeah. In, in that case, I, I I say right for Johnny and I, or for Johnny and me. Um. Okay. So this is a very contentious point, Juan. Um. Uh huh. It's. Have you ever heard of? people speak about the queen's english yes i so have heard both sorry you've heard exactly so the queen's english technically i, I have heard both, both both ways yeah so technically the queen's english is true so we say what would the queen say although she's dead now so we might have <laughs> to say what would the king say um but the the queen would say um Joni and me but a lot of people will still say Joni and I uh I yeah. think yeah most mostly people say that yeah Joni and I so, or you and I you and you I, and I you and me yeah it seems because, more polite doesn't it yeah I mean it's like, a, yeah I remember some of the lyric in the in the song like a you and I you and I you and I you, you, you and me you yeah. you and i you and me yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's probably coming down to whether it can rhyme yeah. with the next lyric <laughs> <laughs> rather than being true to grammar um and i think you know with grammar everything isn't there's lots of rules in english but it doesn't mean that that's exactly how it has to be yep. english english ebbs and flows um according to cultural um, needs, cultural um, growth, you know, change, whatever. It, it, it's constantly, it's, English is actually part of being a human where we all change, you know, we all get older and things change. So <laughs> Tony and I were talking about that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, English will, won't always be, it, it won't be static. It won't stay exactly the same um you might have noticed that even in australia where it seems like we don't have dialects but you can go from one part of australia to another and you do notice a slight difference in in just words for example um i call uh, see i call the things that i wear when i swim in the beach or in a pool i call them swimmers yeah but then people in I think, I think South Australia and Victoria might call them bathers. Okay. And I think in. Bathers. But I never hear the bathers. Bathers, yeah. So, Better. yeah, some like a parent might say to their child, "Have you got your bathers? We're going to the pool." Uh, okay. Whereas I say swimmers. So uh, even yeah. in Australia, it's different all over all, all over the country now. Um, our hot food, our hot food from the takeaway shop. Yep. There's many different names for this exactly the same thing now. Mm -hmm. And it's really strange when you hear those words. And it's really hard to change like what you know when you're a child, for example. Like I could say, I'll, I'll get my swimmers and I'm going to get some scallops from the takeaway shop, from the fish and shit scallops. shop. Scallops. Scallops, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that, that's, that's, I don't mean the fish. And I know scallops uh -huh. is like a... Potato cake. Nah, this is different. No, is see, it, this is, is what I mean. Oh, 
Y el, Johnny, el, who, is, who is the teacher, Johnny? Who is the teacher? You or Nadine? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Johnny's always the one that goes, no, no. Um, no, actually, I think uh, it's the no, other Johnny, one. Johnny, Johnny knows <laughs> a, lot, a lot a lot of the of stuff. Them, yeah, some when you need the, any, <laughs> when you, when you need to ask about anything precisely, the name or something, ask Johnny. <laughs> really? I might remember that, Johnny. You might get a message on WhatsApp in six months. Um, Johnny. <laughs> I, I remember that one. This they some of the state they call that potato uh potato cake. Yeah, and potato the, cake, yep. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah, um, you're right. Rusty, like, I think uh, rusty in some country. Well, that's more countries, but I think some people say rusty now. Um like there's another thing we have called Pluto Pop, or I call you know the um sausage on a stick, yeah. and it's got the batter on the outside. Like the, yeah. like it's it's the really keyword, disgusting, it? uh, but okay. kind of disgusting in a bad good way. Uh, um, we call them Pluto Pops. Ah uh, no, I don't know that one. <laughs> Pluto Pops. Yeah. So in South Australia, I was at um like a a fair thing um. And I asked for a Pluto pup, and the woman just glared at me and said, Dagwood dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Pluto so, pup is this like a P L U T O P U B? Yeah, like Pluto okay. is in the um, planet. Uh, the planet, yeah, and uh, yeah. pup in the pup. As in puppy. Puppy, okay. Yeah, I yeah. don't know why it's called Pluto <laughs> pup, but I Pluto think Dagwood dog is not right at all <laughs> i think it's i think it's pluto in pluto you know the pluto the cartoon yeah maybe i've thought yeah. that too i wonder if it is that pluto dog do you remember yeah. him did you watch him when you were a kid yeah I watched he was him. cool wasn't he <clears throat> do you know him too juan yeah 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 pluto he was, was a dog or no i think yeah, he was a, a space dog wasn't he you remember he yeah, had like yeah. rings around his with tail a, with, a, with a hair man or something like that yeah, yeah and big rings around his neck was he marvin the martian's dog i think i think so um i think he was I'll what's the name of the or the or the uh, what's the name of that of that cartoon? Marvin the Martian. Yeah, but, but Marvel the Martian was from Bugs Bunny, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. I'll, I'll put this. I'll save. I'll show you. He's having problems with this last night, so I hope it works. Tell me if you can't. But, see. How, how do you say? Was the enemy of Bugs Bunny, or yeah, was the I don't know if he was the enemy. Maybe a lit. Maybe sometimes, not the biggest enemy, yeah. but yeah, you could say he was an enemy. Or another word, especially in the cartoon world, is um, foe. F O E. Yeah. F O E. E for egg. E. Uh huh. And I would say. Um, Marvin the Martian was one of Bugs Bunny's foes because he had foes. many. For F O E yeah. F O E S is, uh, foes. is, is foes. plural. Plural. Foes, yeah. Foes. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. you so Juan is my foe or uh -huh. Joni and Juan are my foes. Mm. Okay. Because there was um, Yosemite Sam, there was um, the, the guy with the bald head. That was his main one. Who was he? Can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Can you see Marvin the Martian? Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm good. Yeah. That. So yeah. That's um. That's Pluto. Yeah. He had the yeah. room. That's right. But like a, a Roman gladiator, which has nothing to do with space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, joggers. See, that's another thing, joggers. When I grew up, I would say, my, my parents always said, where are your sand shoes? 
Oh, oh, you say a sneaker is more American. Sneaker? Well, I think sneaker. We use sneaker. So sneakers, joggers, runners, sand shoes. Is it the same uh, one? Sand shoes. I'll show you the sand shoes. These are very Australian. These are like, these are nearly like Vegemite, these shoes. Everyone. <laughs> at school had one of the had these shoes it's you know when you're at school and you have to have that type of shoe or that type of shirt like it, it just, how do you pronounce the one bolly shoes bollies bollies stay up here bollies mm. but the so bollies is coming the bollies is coming from the from the sport from the bolly sports tennis. yeah they're tennis shoes sand, mm. sand shoes that's why they're called sand shoes but this is what we all wore to school for school. Ah, sand shoes, sand yeah. shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, so not sand shoes that you wear on the beach, sand shoes yeah. that you wear on a sand tennis court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, they're really comfortable ones. They're so comfortable. They're, they're like comfortable. Comfortable. really, comfortable. really, really comfortable shoes, these ones. Comfortable. comfortable. And then if you were... So we only had these type, the blue uh -huh. ones, and then mm -hmm. they brought in the black ones. And that was for when you're a bit older, you know, you're just, yeah, I, I'm cool. I wear black bollies. The boys would all wear black bollies. Um, but, but now they have, they have a lot more because they're, they're what we would call a classic, um, a classic brand. I guess. So a little bit like Vegemite. It's been around uh, for a long time and it's something we've used in Australia for a long time. So we would say that. Nadine, Paul, Nadine, yes. Nadine do you like Vegemite? Um, sometimes. <laughs> Not always. I don't like that one. <laughs> no, the, you got to have it in a certain way. Okay. I'll always have Vegemite in my um, house though <laughs> I, i'll always buy vegemite even if um i don't really have it every day so uh -huh. the best best way to have vegemite and i think is delicious is um hot toast probably white toast uh -huh. with lots of butter and a little bit of vegemite just a smear okay yeah, a smear of Vegemite, and that is so delicious, especially in winter with a cup of tea. Um, ah, okay, okay. And then the other way I do like Vegemite, I like it on crumpets. Do you know what crumpets are? No. Oh, or maybe crumpets. I know, but... Yeah, crumpets are awesome. I'll show you crumpets. 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 They they come from England. They're a type of like bread muffin thing, but you just get them from the supermarket. Oh, ah, yeah, I know them. Yeah. So uh, once crumpet, again, crumpet, crumpet is like a, a pancake, but more finer. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I I don't know what a crumpet is really. It's like it's like the dough's not cooked properly or something but it has all the little okay. holes in it and so when you put the vegemite on it all like soaks into the crumpet and that's ah, that's okay. really nice <clears throat> but, the but it should be the, crump the crumpet should be hot should be oh hot. yes oh of course yeah yeah oh, yeah. Warm. yeah no you never have a crumpet not cooked like that yuck that's like eating raw cake uh, okay i'm learning now because i have i have i have eat that one i have eat that one uh I'm just cold. cold. No, yuck. Yeah. Yuck. Your um your son would like crumpets. Okay. Because they're nice and soft. Mm -hmm. and probably my wife won't allow me to, to give him that thing. Your um uh, and I think honey. Honey is the classic on crumpets. Okay. So when I would finish school in winter time, um sometimes yeah. if, yeah. if if my mom was home, she would make um crumpets with honey. We love we love syrup instead of honey. Yeah, syrup syrup in Australia is only for pancakes. 
Okay. Yeah. Only broken but gear. You, you can do whatever you want, but yes, yes. I will, we Basically. we would never have syrup on our table. Do you know what I mean? It would only be for pancakes, okay. which was special. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I know that one is open pancake only. Yeah, but I tell you what, having syrup on pancakes with bacon and eggs, oh, delicious. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, delicious. But we, when I was a kid, <laughs> never would we have syrup on the table. Too much sugar, you know, like my mum would never. Can, pancakes were special. Too um, much sugar, yeah. Yeah. So what what about you, Jenny? The, what's the, the, what's uh, the idea that's burning in your head right now? What's happening here? What do you mean? When, the... For questions, for what you want to know. Like if you were sitting in front of an oracle right now <laughs> with the biggest question you ever wanted to know, what would it be? What do you mean the biggest question for this course or biggest question in the... In the universe. Oh, in the universe. What is that, the biggest question? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find that one. <laughs> no. The biggest question. Ah, I don't know. No. What, I was just thinking for something to talk about. Um, but look, do you want to, will we do one of the um, TED Talks? Let talks? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll go to this one marketing meeting. Oh, I was telling um, Juan, Joni, that yep. we will keep the modules open. We'll keep the course open for a month. Oh, okay. After you finish. So next okay. week is the last class and we'll keep okay. it open for a month. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, also, I don't know if you'd be interested, but I'm more than happy to have conversations with you that aren't through the course, like just mm. as a, you know, a check in every now and again mm. and have a yeah. conversation. Yeah. Would you be interested in something like that that you didn't have to pay for? It'd just be for me. And mm. nah. until, until you like sort of see if there's something better for you out there. Yeah. Interested in that? Think about it. It's no yeah. problem. For me, it will yeah. be used for any kind of conversation. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. With, with with feedback, obviously useful. Yeah. yeah. As, a, yeah. as I say, for example, during the week or working with Johnny, we try to correct each other, but sometimes both of us we are in the same mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And and as I say, for example, when you are talking in a meeting. That is obviously a challenge. Yeah. People won't correct you or won't try to help you to improve your English. People you always only the, the only thing that they, they are care or they want to is receive the information that they need and continue yeah. with the with the job. So yeah. we don't have that kind of space or time to normally we ask we ask the people, hey, I'm I'm doing right, I'm saying in a correct way, because it's not Obviously, it's not the word of the people tell you or let you know when you make a mistake. Yep. I know what you're saying, and, and that's that fast pace at work, and you can't stop no, and slow can't. everything down to say, mm. I don't understand you, or are you, do I, did I say it right? Um, yeah. But, yeah, you, you just can't. It's not, I know what you mean. It's hard, isn't it? To do that, I mean, and, I let me, yeah. and let me yeah. say that no everyone in Australia, or maybe the local ones, what we used to work with, no all of them are kind. So no, no, they're not. When they are struggling to to understand you, they just feel upset and they just they they make it that it's your fault. Yeah, that it's you're the one who has the problem, not not the and, other way they, around they don't understand that we have to work with two engines one engine is trying to do the translation i know and another engine trying to 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 do the job i know it's and a lot of australians will think of people like foreigners as 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 dumb because of that uh -huh. like yeah. stupid and that's not fair like that's so yeah. not fair i mean 
I've been with people that have been really nasty to someone, like say a taxi driver, for example, in a big city like Sydney, yep. you know, and they may have been driving that taxi for 10 years, but they still have a very strong accent. Mm. But also that person is trained as a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. And the person I'm with will be like, especially if they've been drinking and, you know, Australia has a bad um, Drinker. bad culture around drinking, yeah. but they'll be like, oh, why don't you bloody speak English? I can't bloody understand you, you know? That's, mm. And it's so, it's so unfair. It's stupid. I'm, and I apologise for that. Have you heard of the white Australia policy? No. So in the in the early 1900s, ah uh, okay, there was a policy that restricted anyone that wasn't like white and primarily from places like England or France, like the the Western world. Mm -hmm. So we didn't actually allow anyone from asian countries into australia until the uh, mid 70s after the vietnam war and so if people did come into australia that were asian we made them especially and it's it was around the chinese communities mm -hmm. and they've always always been in australia as long as white people have been here there's been afghans there's been chinese <laughs> there's been vietnamese many 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 different types of people and even up north we've had a lot of trade that's gone back with the aboriginals with um indonesia as well mm -hmm. so that's like that's nearly ancient you know yeah. communication but we didn't want it was all about do you remember when or maybe you don't i don't know but when charles darwin's theory came about with evolution mm -hmm. people yeah. science put that onto people as well and that's when you got classifications of people and so people like aboriginals were considered very 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 low and oh, then okay. the white kind of like roman looking person was the highest oh, so okay. if anyone else that was in a low category came into our country people saw that as like um mixing with bad blood you know if if children were born and the or marriages were would come mm -hmm. about and also people didn't they just did not like the chinese um making money or marrying their women or like they there was a lot of mining obviously in the late 1800s so the chinese were very good at mining and the yeah. white the white it, men did not like that at all yeah i think i saw um, that uh, Nadine, in the history in uh, victoria somewhere yeah, in yeah. somewhere in the ballarat and the bendigo there is a lot of the uh, chinese uh what is it, ancient so it's like a more before 18, yeah, yeah, before 1800 or something like 1700, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. just uh, make it like a, a group in that area. And I saw that's the uh, the uh, like an old house there, all the activities from Chinese that one before they moving all around the uh, gold mine to Calgary as well. They just mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you just use the horse going that one. I saw that one the uh, the. the was it the toll gate? The toll gate. This just explain us. The that. toll gate. Say that again, Johnny. The what? What do you call it? Tour. Tour gate. Tour guide. Tour guide. Sorry. Tour oh, guide. the tour yeah. guide. So, um, you need to say the tour guide <laughs> explained to us. Yeah, it's exp explained to me because I I asked him. Yeah. The, uh, what is this? The what is it happening here? China is coming here, and yeah, that's exactly what you said. It's like the you just can't find the job. It's just doing the uh, like, uh, what do you call that? It's like uh, hard work, something like that. Hard work in the uh, mine. Um, they, yeah. Cutting cutting rocks and yes, something like that. They yeah. just cutting rock. They do but, the mine. They do the uh, with the uh, all uh, limited uh, tool. But they 
they they they they got the uh the, the, the goal they got the goal that's why yeah, so you would you would understand alluvial mining yeah yeah <laughs> so chinese were very good at that mm. whereas white men they didn't have any training they went to the gold fields because there was money there was gold you know like entire towns in Australia were completely wiped out because everyone went to the gold field. So this was in the mm. late 1800s, about the 1850s mm. and onwards. And the Chinese, so you already had the California gold rush happening um, I, over yeah, in America. I, yes, I hear that one. So I read so, it a lot of Chinese companies already had established workforces where people would go to America and then they came here. So the Chinese worker wasn't working for themselves, they were working for their um, company, you know, their bosses. Mm -hmm. And they understood how alluvial mining worked in the fact that when somebody left a, a pit like went left their uh, mining shaft which happened many many times like it was a big risk to go into these gold fields without any training obviously and the men would buy um i don't know do they buy a gold shaft like an indoor license i think isn't it so yeah they would have a license to dig for gold and then they would abandon it because they couldn't find anything and then the chinese would strategically come along and take over that space and find the surface gold and the australian well they weren't you know they were like a mixture of irish and english and and different people like that they did not like that at all they were yeah. very very resentful and they also didn't like the fact that Chinese people had a completely different looking culture. They wore different clothes, they spoke a different language, they ate different food, they had different religious practices. So that would have been very important because Christianity, you know, it was a big part of society. It was very important to be, you know, a religious person and everyone would have believed in God, not like now. So they wanted, they didn't understand yes. a different way of worship and they were worshiping, you know, things like, um, like Buddha and their own particular gods and they were burning incense and their, their temples weren't churches, things like that. And then one of the big things was, they didn't like the fact that some of the white women were marrying Chinese men. And so we had our federation, which is when all of the states became one nation. That was in 1901. And one of the biggest reasons for that and part of the campaign to get everybody to like agree like all the states and then people had to vote was um the white australia policy which meant excluding anyone that looked different from you know that white english type of person <clears throat> so not to let them into the country unless like there was a very 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 strict purpose yep. or or putting really, really high taxes mm. on people. So a lot of um, a lot of Chinese people would do market gardening because they couldn't get work. Nobody would give them work. So they would get market gardening and and they were very good at it. You know, they were very successful at it. But they would go from like Victoria to New South Wales and things like that mm. to sell their product, especially if they lived around those areas. and they were taxed way higher than what white people were just to carry their food from one state to another. Yep. So that made it hard. And then, you know, Chinese people were like, well, that's you know, a bit shit, let's go. So, you know, that's, that's what the white Australia policy is. And that going back to what you said, Juan, about people 
not being very kind about your language it comes from that mm. yeah um so so there's your history lesson for the day but, <laughs> but what i can say is that it's not all of them obviously most of the people understand that they are working with with yeah with people from different nationalities but yeah. you can find easily a couple of those yeah um it's usually just dickheads yeah, <laughs> like, yeah you can find a couple of those people that are dickheads that don't really you know they're not nice people they're very prejudiced they don't like new things they think everyone should be like us which is stupid because yeah who wants to be a white english person anyway how boring <laughs> compared to all the other cultures in the world um, uh, let's watch this one and then we can talk about it so you should i've opened this one it's module 18 and 19 18 and 19. Yep. Can you still see my screen? Yes. 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 See a guy holding a what a lamp, I think it is. Yep. A lamp, a light. Light, light, yeah. Let me just um get my sound. In which case you say lamp? In which case you say light uh, or light? Okay, or... so a lamp. You know, the, the kind of stand up lamps. What you have next to your bed and you can uh -huh. carry around the house, you know, if you, uh -huh. but mainly you put it next to your bed and you turn your lamp on and off. Yeah. Uh -huh. But a light is what we would say for what is on the ceiling. Oh, okay. Light. And that the, the highlight or let's say the flashlight or. Flashlight? Are we yeah we can say flashlight but we would say torch so a torch is what torch. you would, yeah, yeah torch. if you um if, you if there was a, a blackout or camping yeah you have a torch a torch okay or torch, a, a, light and lamp okay. yeah so but i could also say can you turn the light on if like if you had, if we had a torch, if we were camping uh -huh. and you were next to me with the torch in your hand, I could say, turn the light on, please. Mm. And people would understand what I mean. I, I, I'd also say, turn the, turn the torch on. Um, oh. If you're in a house, you would say, turn the light on with the lamps and the ceiling. So not in the torch with the fire. This is still the torch, eh, so you know the, the fire, fire with the bam, the bamboo. Yeah, we we still call that a torch. Yeah, but uh, I mean okay. we don't use them. We we're talking about the ones with the battery. Is that what you just uh, said? Battery. Yes, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, know you said you did you say fire? Yeah, fire. No, we don't say fire. Fire, fire are the um, ones that people would have in ancient times you know how yeah. they would light yeah but we put it like a you know the bamboo inside that's fire here we still call that one is thought or not oh i thought you said batteries no no not battery the fire bamboo bamboo you put okay, bamboo yeah yeah yep, yep. this is all like uh, when you oh camping, yeah we can still say yep, yeah. exactly and that's where the, the torch that we use now comes from the name uh, yeah, yeah so before electricity people would you know go into their village with a torch mm -hmm. but it would be fire right yeah so think about the same thing we're still holding something like a stick but we have batteries it's, and a glow yeah, you, in some way you're still holding a, a flame yeah it's the same it's called it's called an archaic trait, I think. So when we say torch, we know we mean the one with the batteries that we have in our car or in our drawer, in our kitchen. 
but we also know that torch means what Joni said. But mm. like I would never say, oh, can you turn the torch on? And then you come into the room with a, with a fire on the end of a stick. Like that just would never happen, but we still know that it means the same thing. It's called, I think it's called archaic trait or something. When that, when that happens, it's like an old, like there's an old word. It's like, you know, boats, when you look back, ancient boats are made in a certain style, but then the technology completely changes, but it still kind of looks the same as it did when it was old. That's archaic technology. So they, they're copying original things. So some words, like I said, a language <clears throat> ebbs and flows, you know, it changes, it grows, it um why can we do this? Okay. 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 I think the Spanish is the same word. Archaic. Yeah, it's an old word. It, it's Nadine, old. which one which one is the origin of, of English? I, I I I'm pretty sure that is the same Latin or no. It might be. A lot of English words come from, this is the one I mean here. Archaic. Yeah. Archaic, yeah. Archaic. Archaic, yeah. We, can, we can mention archaic as a synonym of obsolete or no? Yeah, you can see on my screen the word obsolete has come up. So the torch that oh. we were talking about is obsolete. The torch with the okay. fire is obsolete. But we still use the word torch, don't we? Torch. Okay. Yeah, so if we look here on Wikipedia, which is not, don't ever think Wikipedia is 100% true, but it's yeah, a good way yeah, to get true. ideas. It's someone um, just feel that one. It's, <laughs> we I know, know they can change it. Yeah, but, you can use, if you're, if you're in, the, in the school or in uni, you can use this one. No, no, you know, we get told don't use don't use Wikipedia. Still yeah. we still yeah. all use it, but we don't we're not allowed to use it. Yeah. Um Yeah, so in language obsolete. Oh. Archaism is a word, a sense of a word, that's another important thing. So the sense of a word can change over time. <clears throat> um or a style of speech or writing that belongs to a historical epoch. Um, in English, people would say, you know, like Shakespeare language, how art thou? Yeah. Which means, how, how, how are you? <laughs> how art thou? People yeah. don't, don't say that anymore, but it's the same meaning. Um, I know, for example, in India, for a long time, they would learn very, very old English. And then when they would come to um, Europe, they couldn't speak the same language because it was, they were using words like, how art thou? And everyone would be like, what are you talking about, weirdo? So that's, you know, you're right. Um, Juan, as in conversations are different, aren't they? You can look at a book and it doesn't translate. Yeah. Um, where can I not get this? How do I share sound on Zoom, guys? How do you share on Zoom? No, what like you want the, the sound, you know, like I want to play the video, but I want you to hear it as well. I think that you had to share the application more than the screen. Um, Instead the what, screen, the application does. I think that you did the previous, one of the, the initial classes, you did something. I've, I know, I've done it before, I just don't do it much. 
it's really easy. <laughs> it's just, I don't. Ah, there it is. Tell me if you can hear this. Oh, no. It's on mute. That you do all of your cooking with charcoal. Yep, we can. This is how the world's two all right. poorest people. One second, I'll um, every day. take it back. This isn't to the just start. inconvenient. So, this one is sitting in the module that essentially is about meetings. But we'll see what the so topic is, okay? This too much. Uh, imagine that you light your home with kerosene and candles every night and that you do all of your cooking with charcoal. This is how the world's two billion poorest people cook and light their homes every day. And this isn't just inconvenient. This is inefficient. It's expensive. It's harmful to human health. It's harmful to the environment. And it's unproductive. And that's energy poverty. So let me give you a couple of examples. I work in Haiti, where about 80% of the population lives in energy poverty. The average household spends 10% of its income on kerosene for lighting. That's an order of magnitude greater than what the average US house, the US household spends on electricity to light their homes. The 2008 hurricane season in Haiti caused about $1 billion in damage. It was a sixth of their GDP. And the damage was so severe because the primary energy fuel in Haiti is charcoal, which is made from trees and has left the country almost completely deforested. Without trees, the country can't absorb heavy rains and massive uh, flooding as a result. So in the industrialized world, we built walls that protect us from the externalities of our energy use. We can afford to clean up acute environmental disasters, and we can also afford to adapt to chronic conditions like climate change. That's not the case for Haiti. They can't afford this. The only way that they're going to lift themselves out of energy poverty is by adapting fuels that are more efficient, that are less expensive, that are better for human health, that are better for the environment, and that are more productive. So it turns out that those fuels and technologies exist. And this is an example of that. This is a solar LED light bulb that we sell for a retail price of about $10 in rural Haiti. That's a payback period of less than three months for the average Haitian household. So um, the prescription to solve energy poverty seems pretty straightforward. You develop these technologies that have a great return on investment, and people should be snatching them up. But that's not the case. The first time I ever went down to Haiti was in August of 2008, sort of on a whim, and I was fielding surveys in the rural south of the country to assess the extent of energy poverty. And at night, I would go around sometimes, and I would speak with the street vendors and see if they were interested in buying these solar LED lamps. And so one woman who I encountered turned down my offer, and she said, mon chéri, c'est trop cher, which basically means, my dear, it's too expensive. But I tried to explain to her, you know, look, this is going to save you a lot of money and it's going to give you even better light than what you're using now uh, with the kerosene. So I didn't make the sale, but I did learn a really important lesson, which is that technology, products, were not going to end energy poverty. Instead, access was going to. And specifically, there are two types of access that are going to end energy poverty. There's physical access and there's financial access. So physical access, what does that mean? Uh, it's very expensive for low-income households in developing countries to reach major centers of commerce. And it's basically impossible for them to order something off of Amazon.com. The last mile is a phrase that's normally associated with the telecommunications industry. It means that last bit of wire that's necessary to connect a customer to the provider. What we need for uh, ending energy poverty are last mile retailers that bring these clean energy products to the people. The kerosene and charcoal value chains already figured this out. Those fuels are ubiquitous across the entire country. You can go to the most remote village in Haiti and you will find somebody selling kerosene and charcoal. So the other type of access, financial. We all know that uh, clean energy products, technologies, tend to be characterized by higher upfront costs but very low operating costs. And so in the industrialized world, we have very generous subsidies that are specifically designed to bring down those upfront costs. Those subsidies don't exist in Haiti. What they do have is microfinance, but you're going to severely diminish the value proposition of your clean energy product if you expect somebody in Haiti to go out, get a microloan, go back to the retailer, and then buy the clean energy product. So 
the prescription to end energy poverty is much more complicated than simply products. Uh, we need to integrate financial access directly into new, innovative distribution models. What does that mean? That means bundling consumer credit with the retailer. This is really easy for Bloomingdale's to do, but it's not so easy for a rural sales agent in Haiti to do. We need to redirect cash flows that are going now from the diaspora in the United States through uh, Western Union wire transfers and cash directly into clean energy products that can be delivered to or picked up by their friends or family in Haiti. So the next time you hear about the technology or product that's going to change the world, be a little bit skeptical. The inventor Dean Kamen, the guy who invented the Segway, uh, a genius by any standards, once said that uh, his job is easy. Inventing things is easy. The hard part is technology dissemination. It's getting those technologies and products to the people who need it most. Thank you. All right, let's pretend that you've just heard that pitch in a conversation, in a um, meeting. Uh -huh. um, what would you say? Let's say I am, let's say I'm, was... I'm, I'm him. Yeah. I'm I'm that guy. So talk to okay, me about yeah, I will what... ask you I will ask you why the people who are feeding thought that you ten dollar was too expensive for them and why he, he couldn't explain the the benefits or the future benefits of that lamp. Now you're more talking about the engagement. Okay, so you could just say there i mean what you said is is technically correct but you could just say um why didn't you explain <clears throat> or oh, why could, didn't you could, could manage you, to engage yeah could you have explained the um technical dissemination better i think would just be the simple way to say that why couldn't you explain the technical dissemination better um, to to encourage? Yes, the, you know that like, what is what, that is one of the of the of the problem with with engineers with technical or let's say with people with technical skills is that we are pretty good with the thing that we do, but we are really bad trying to explain to uh, let's say common people what we do every single yeah. day yeah so the word common people oh you could say lay people lay l-a-y l-a-y lay people okay lay yeah people. it used to be lay layman but we can't lay. say that anymore <laughs> lay people why, um, why? <laughs> why you can't say that this is like a some discrimination <laughs> Yeah, because it yeah. says man, we have to say person now, uh, like okay. like po postman or fireman. But it would always yeah, so be... I had to say lay lay people lay people. lay people. Yeah, lay people. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So uh, do you know what a lay person is? No, I think that lay is something that is going down or no. Lay back, so lay back. it's when you say the common remaining. common people, what you mean is a lay person um you know when you go to the doctor and the doctor uh -huh. says all of those terms and then you say i don't understand what you mean and they said oh you've got the flu <laughs> yeah. that that you in that situation are the lay person yeah so you are saying to me that tech people in the engineering um sector mm -hmm find it very hard to translate our ideas to lay yes. people. That's what you just said to me. Yes, I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Sorry. 
So you could just, you could break that right down by saying, how can you make it easier? If we bought that product, how could we make it easier to engage that woman to spend the $10? Easier um, and cheaper. <laughs> easy. Well, it, it may not. I mean, cheaper. <laughs> I think that does $10 is just the, the, the producing cost. Just no more than that ten dollars. Ten dollars is nothing for us yeah. to go and buy at Bunnings, yeah. but ten dollars <laughs> is someone's monthly grocery yeah. bill yeah. in in Haiti. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I mean, you will save how much they are spending in in in, in coal. Ah, yeah. probably they are not spending money because they they just need to go cut a couple of trees, bring the bring the wood and make the coal, make the fire. So you would say they're one, um, they're not going to the supermarket, they're collecting firewood, which is more important than groceries. They're collecting firewood to start a fire. Yeah, to because cook the their food. Is for, for, for them is free. Firewood. Yeah, they just need yeah. to go and cut. The problem is a uh, an environmental problem. Oh, that is that is what I try. What what, what oh, I. Oh, okay, from. okay. But, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So the. So okay, how, how so you will how you will explain to a lay per people? Hey, yeah. you know what? You have to spend this money. I know that you are getting the, the 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 life for free because you are just going there and cutting the cutting 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 the yeah. the trees. Yeah. But if you continue with that one, you will got this kind of problem: the flu, because the if you get any rain, you won't have enough trees to absorb the that water. Yeah. And in the in the future, you will have a big environmental problem, or you will yeah. lose your house. But yeah. at the moment, they are thinking on this ten dollars. Exactly. So, so they don't care about future. Yeah. So if I was that man in your meeting room right now, you would say to him, how can we educate that woman better to understand yeah. that the $10 yeah. is, um, is reasonable or, but it's, it's coming back to how can we educate that woman better? Mm. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing, how to educate. Yeah. and to try to explain yeah the impact or the future impact yeah okay that's, that's better away. yeah how how can we educate that woman to understand the impact yeah of burning firewood of her of maybe her traditional practice we could say it like that of burning firewood um yeah. is in the long term on the environment and a lot of healthy issues you will have probably with your lungs you will have uh, how do you say respiratory problems? Respiratory, yep. Respiratory problem yep. or issues yep. or healthy issues? Uh, respiratory, um, respiratory issues, issues problems. problems, problems, respiratory problems. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like but that. you could you could sell <clears> that <throat> as on a personal level. She mm -hmm. could um, she could suffer from respiratory problems mm -hmm. uh -huh. on um, a wider social level. It would help her community to um, regenerate the trees and the forest to create a more sustainable yeah. um, you know, future for the village. That's just on a very like close, you know, they, they want the village to stay there. We know that if they keep chopping the trees down, the village will eventually go because you lose all the, you know, the soil or road and the, the structure so, and the yes. in infrastructure will change and the village won't be there anymore. So yeah. you, you could sort of come at it from a person. What, what are the personal impacts? What, what are the societal impacts and then what are the global impacts? Yeah. Yeah. So how could I help? How could you explain better 
to that woman what the personal impacts, the personal societal and global impacts are and why the $10 is a better option. Yep. Does that help? Yep. It's something like that is one of the steps. Yeah. I'm just trying to, are... cor to correct you as you're talking. Yep. 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 That's good. Yeah. Um, would you, would you, I mean, how do you remember this stuff if we were talking like this? Uh, how I remember the feedback or something like that? Yeah, like how, how would you remember what I just said to you? Ah, this next time when I use the same thing, yeah, I will, that picture will come to my, to my mind and I will say, ah, okay. This person correct me in this way, so I will, I will repeat again in the in the in the. I will say in the wrong way as a first time, but then I will repeat okay. rapidly or quickly. I will say, okay, this person correct me, and I have to say in this way. Okay, oh, all right. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I I don't have a second language, so I don't know how your brain works. So that's really really helpful for me to understand that. But, but it's also depend on the of the person because for me I have sometimes I have good um, let's say Im, you say image memory or picture memory yeah picture memory yeah picture memory I have really good picture memory so I just bring something that happened in the previous day. I remember the face and everything I say, okay yeah it, it, this thing what happened uh... Uh, the other way. Is writing when I write the things I learn easily. Reading for me is not the way. Okay. If All I right. read something for me, like uh, yeah, yeah, I will forget quicker. You need something visual to trigger your brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. So everything you just said, then you could say that in that one sentence. I need visual images to trigger my brain. That's visual good. images. I need <laughs> visual images. Visual what? Images. Visual, visual, visual images. Images. Yeah. I need visual images. To trigger to, my brain. To trigger. To trigger my brain. Yeah. I need visual images yeah. to trigger my yeah. brain. That's good. <clears throat> um, all right, Journey, what about you? You need to talk. You're in a meeting and you need to ask this guy something because you're thinking of... Um, you're thinking of buying the torches to help yeah. people in a remote community. So, okay, let's go back to when you worked in um, Indo. Yep. And you worked in that place with the giant driveway. <laughs> giant driveway? Nah, there is no giant driveway. Yeah, the dr that's, I can say that's a <laughs> no, driveway. You we... know how you drove up the hill? <laughs> yeah, we work with the... Um... Close to the like a remote community, yes. Yeah, so let's say one, yeah. as part of community outreach, yep. The company is thinking of buying those torches, yep, um, to help the communities access. Uh, you know, the, is, yeah. yeah. Let's just it's pretend, best, <laughs> like I just pre or based on my experience, people. I can tell yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You I tell me, tell you, yeah. It is difficult. To what's it? To uh, to convince what do you call it? To convince, convince. the remote, the, the convince yeah. the uh, the crowded or the remote community, yeah, to buy something like that, yeah, rather than they get a free to the from the forest or from the uh yeah, from the jungle around that. Uh, they just grab it, uh, okay, and take to some the firewood. Yep. and do the firewood at home that they yep. spend the money yep. to buy that one which yep. is which is you need to very confident to confirm that this one is just gonna or was it solve your environment solve your problem they they, they can't trust you until they have some proof so what so. you can say that everything you said there is it's hard to convince traditional yeah. communities to change yes. their practices Yes, until you have some something and, that you can until prove they it. until they see proof, yeah. and they will and they will not spend money because they expect yeah. company to provide the materials. Yeah, even 
even yeah. you cut all the trees and there is a flooding to the house, they still not trust you. They still not, yeah. I can't believe you because that, this is yeah. not because of you, this is because of God. Trust because, me. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Me, that's what happened there. That's yeah. what happened there in the remote. Yeah. Yeah. It is difficult. It is difficult you to, yeah. to unless, I mean, I don't know, unless you uh, try to convince one of the, uh, like a leader, traditional yeah. leader. Community yeah. leader. Yeah, community leader. You can pick up one or two or three of them. Yeah. Try to, uh, what is that, infiltrate it. Try to... Uh, infiltrate. Them, yeah, Infil infiltrate yeah. to them and try to yeah. communicate to them. Yeah. Try to explain that. Try yeah. to teach them, tend to whatever you want to, to do that want to convince. Yeah. Yeah. Only only or the leader. Yes. Yeah. When you once you get it, once you get it that one, you can do this next step. Otherwise, yeah. I, I yeah. Okay, so can I just change that to um yeah. one of the strategies yes. we can use is to build a rapport do you know what rapport is no nah, what is it to be um, i mean relationships or what yeah nah. relationship we've been yes. building rapport every week we've gotten yeah. to know each other better we understand each other we've we've built a slight a slight bit of trust things how, like how do you that you spell the report report R -A is it R -A -R -A -R -A -P -P -R -A -P -P oh okay just just oh i think i think i'll check Report. R -A -P -P -O -R. Report. 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 Is it with T? Is it? No. I think it with T. Yeah. Yeah, it might be with T, but you, yeah. it's a silent T. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a silent T. So R -A -P -P O R T. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the this bit here, she was able to establish a good rapport. Yep. With with the community leaders. Yeah. And I think you need to go uh what is it? speak with them intense, like uh, you go to the traditional cafe, you go to the lounge, you go to the uh like a dinner, you do that one. Do the I mean that's based on our experience if we want to sell something to the uh, the remote community. So like yeah, once you convince them that's that's quite easily for you to sell because they it's very sensitive for them to spend the money. Like even like in the city, we call that ah, it's ten dollars only. It's not value for us, but for them, that's a value. That's big value. So like they have like a spend the money for the food, spend money for the uh, what is that? The what is it? Another one? The the best uh, food for the water. It's, it's, Sometimes what are the primary primary you needed? Yeah, the primary needed. So it's like right, yeah, uh, yeah. So can you see my screen with I'm typing, or can you just see the Google screen? No, nah, I'm just see the Google the report. Is it? Nothing. Sorry, sorry. It's related, but it's it's a little bit. I was just thinking. Can I say? Uh, one of one of my skill is that I can easily establish good rapport, good rapport with the stakeholder. One of my skills. Yeah. Mm, I'd that rather, I can easily. I'd, I'd rather you say. So, who are you talking to right now? Mm to one of my bosses or one of my chief or something like that. Are you telling them that you have that skill? Yeah. Or are you telling them then that this is an idea that we could use? That I have that skill. Okay. Can you see my um, document now? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat>
Is that right, Juan? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And what did you say before, Janie, about, okay, oh, I know what you said, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't say anything. <laughs> um, okay. the community so that's part of what you said Joni yes yeah and after that well, you can convince the uh the group or what is it the community yeah. to buy your products and all that yeah So this, I'm using like community a lot, but this is conversation. This isn't writing an essay, you know? Yeah. How does that sound? Yeah, that. Yeah. And the other that's they. I mean, that's who is it, the name? <coughs> uh, who is it the, the name? The, the guy's name? I can't remember. The other thing that he. Oh, the speaker. Sorry. Yeah. yeah the, he told he told us that the uh, this product is like a is the this technology. Uh, he spends oh, like a lot of money yeah. in yeah a lot of money in the front. I mean, in the beginning. And less of for what is it? Less money for the operation, something like that. Was it technical dissemination? Uh no, I didn't. I think it's like a spend money. Was it the uh, uh, uh what is that? The, the project spend money in the beginning. They spend huge uh, huge money in the beginning, but small in the operation, something like that. They they call that something. That's why I had to yeah. Okay, but can you? Okay. I can't remember they, the one. They, they <laughs> what did they say? They that spend, one? Spend, they spend more. Uh, they spend more in the engineering stage than the production yeah. stage. Something like that. I think so, something like that. I mean, it's like they spend more money in the beginning, and it's just like less money in in when they do the operation. When do when they really products yeah, pro produce the produce part. the product? Yeah, something like that. That's that's why they said. This is the pika to sell to sell this the uh, this thing with the lower cost because they already spend a lot of money in the in the beginning. Yeah, this one here, Joni. Can yeah. you see this screen? Yeah, yeah, I can with see the, what you with the red with the pink ribbon. No, I can't see the pink one. Which one is the pink? So where I was before with Google. Can you see this one? Hang on. I saw you. <laughs> you saw me. Hi. You see this now? Not yet. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Oh, you can see it? Yes. Yep. So it's usually Zoom has a little thing telling me when you can see it. It's not working. I don't know. I must have but I, <laughs> someone I can't changed saw the, the setting. I can't sort of ping ribbon. It's just just like a normal one. Can you say in inventing yeah. is the easy, easy part? part? Yes, I can see that. All right. 
So I think what you're talking about is, where was it? I just had it. So it turns out that fees and is that solo is a retail price that's a payback. Well, there was an actual phrase, but the screen moved. Here, here it is, here. Yeah. Um, we all know yeah, that yeah, yeah, energy but, yes. products, technologies, yes. tend to be characterized by higher yeah. upfront costs, but very yes. low operating costs. So yes. what what did you want to say around that? I think this because they spend a lot of money in, in the front, in, in, in the beginning. So okay, the, so that yeah, so, word front, you say up front. Yeah, up front. So he can't sell that the product uh, with up front. with a lower lower cost something like that. Okay. Yeah. The long term savings. Yeah. A low. So what what point are you trying to make? Is that what you want to say to the marketing guy, or who are you nah, saying this to? I think it's probably this one. If they got if they if they need to spend an uh, upfront cost with the highest one, probably he can have like a, a join with the uh, uh, what is that uh, like a government because government have the another you know the uh, another or budget, something like that, to uh, help the people. Budget yeah. or government incentives. Incentive, whatever, yeah, yeah. incentive, something like that. So or, like, yeah. like they um, gave us incentives to put solar panels on our roofs. Yes, correct. It's yeah. similar, yeah. It's similar with that one. So I think, I think, I think that there is a contradiction because you are saying, but the long term saving are low the upfront but the long term are... yeah but the long term saving should be high yeah because you are saying saving or oh, let's so, say the yeah, long term yeah. saving no, are say, low. Yeah. so upfront sorry about that high. i want just no that's just good no that's that. that's fine no worries that's really good thank you upfront costs are high but the long-term savings um uh 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 uh, uh we could say, say in, a, a, a huge a great or yeah huge yeah in conversation huge would be really appropriate there is that huge is that how you spell huge no oh that's a name huge which you Oh, E E H U E. Yeah. 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 G E. Yeah. Yeah. Upfront costs are high, but the long-term savings are huge. And if you were trying to convince someone, you'd be like, "Look, mate, you know it's going to cost you a lot at the beginning." But you'll save, you'll save heaps in the long run, mate. Right? Like if you were talking one on one with someone in the office, you know, mm -hmm. that would be you'd you'd bring it right back down. Do you remember all of the um stuff we do in the um the idioms, the slang? Oh, this, the Australian slang. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that is how we speak in Australia. You must have noticed that. You'd you'd be standing there with your work colleague. Yep. Just go, mate. The savings are huge. Look, you're gonna put put a bit out when you start, but I tell you, in the long run. You're gonna save a shitload. Mm. Like that is how someone would talk 
in a meeting, <clears throat> even if they're the boss. Maybe it's slowly changing a bit now, but I mean, I've heard the way miners speak when there's no women around. Well, they think <laughs> there's no women around. Even the women so, around, they still don't care about that. They still do now because there's more yeah. women in the mine. So, yeah, they yeah. still do. But it's very it's very much like that slang, isn't it, that we were mm. talking about at the beginning of the course. And, and, you know, mate, mate, you've got to get onto this. This is great. You know, this is going to work. You're going to save a mozza. You know, all those sort of words get used. But basically... You can just, this is what you're saying. So that's up to you. Like to listen to that slang and think, where are they using that? Why are they using that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you could even write down something if you remember or I don't know, maybe you could sneakily record something. I know, no, you're not allowed to do that, are you? Um, like if you remembered something that really stuck out and you wrote it down, I promise you there would be slang in there somewhere that you didn't understand because that's yeah. how Australians speak. Yeah. Yeah, and then we could talk about that, you know. We could... I could in, I could interpret that for you and tell you how to respond as well, you know, what's appropriate with slang in that way because Australians just, that's how we trust each other in a weird kind of way is by using slang. When we're comfortable with people and we, and we, we learn to trust each other when they're, it goes back to the convicts. So the no. convicts in Australia, they would speak, um, they had lots of different dialects because they were coming from all over England and Ireland and Scotland. They, all, <coughs> they still spoke a lot of traditional languages. So to communicate, they kind of needed to form their own type of language. It wasn't pidgin English. They still spoke English. It was just they brought a lot of slang into it. Okay, and that's and they had to learn to trust each other because they're in this place where they had nothing other than, you know, they were in prison. They had to learn to trust each other to get through the day. So I think we still do that a lot in Australia when we speak in that. Like, I think this is such a good example to say to someone like, mate, mate, you got to get onto this shit. Like we do, we do like that. I don't know, you know, it's not conscious when it's happening, but it makes me feel comfortable with that person. Mm. Which is annoying for you guys. Yeah. 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 Um, look, I'm happy to keep talking if you want to keep talking today. So, have you got? Is your baby awake? Do you want to? What do you want to do? Yes, he is away and waiting now outside of the door. <laughs> oh, is he? oh, poor baby. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you you go. Um, but let look. I'm I'm a hundred percent more than happy to keep talking like this, and and it'll it'll, it'll just be between friends. Like we'll use my Zoom account mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. I could still use the materials for another month, like you. So, um, yeah, let, let's do it. I'm happy to do that. And, and mm. you know, I like, I, it's enjoyable. I sit here studying most of the day. I, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not lonely, <laughs> but okay. it's not, nice, it's nice to have someone to talk to, you know, when you're sitting at your desk, does that make sense? Like just to break yeah. up the day. Otherwise I, I do just sit here studying or I go to uni and study there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So don't think it's a problem for me, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. okay. That would be really good. Yeah, that yeah. would be useful. That's really right. good. Uh, yeah. Um, but we do have one more class next week. I, I'm, I didn't hear from Beata today, so I'm not sure like whether she'll be coming next week, but we'll keep talking next week. Yep. Um, and then we can work out a time from there that suits all of us. Okay.
Yeah, okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so, then, bye and thank you so much. Yeah, okay, thank thanks, you. Nadine, yeah. No, I, I hope See I can help. Have a lovely day. See ya. You too. Okay, See ya. bye. Thank you.